out so uh, Vinny can grab it. And now I'm going to admit everybody because we're just about at seven o'clock, I think. Yep. I'm going to admit everybody. And while everybody's popping in there, I'm going to uh, spotlight you. Ooh. And I'm going to spotlight me. And we'll have everybody over on the side and I'll keep letting people in that come in. Hi, Hi guys. Uh, everybody is on. Uh, Gordon's already here. Um, everybody, uh, please keep yourself on mute if you don't mind, because I don't want you popping up on Facebook Live unless you want everybody to see your living room. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to get us up on Facebook Live right now, and then we'll uh, then we'll start this shindig. Let's see how it, how it goes here. So let me move this over. There's not enough room on the screen, I found. That's the other thing, too. Let me go live on Facebook and get us set up. I want to do that on page we manage. I want to do it on Julio's Liquors. And I'm also recording this, guys, just so everybody knows. I'm also recording that so that um, if we need to pull something down for, um, for Gordon uh, to use at the distillery or share with everybody that will have it, um, just not on Facebook Live. But let me get Facebook Live. Facebook Live, obviously, again, being slow today. And let's out. All right. I'm going to go live. And that'll pop up in just a minute, and we'll be live on Facebook, and I'll introduce everybody to our Whiskey Wednesday. All right, let's go. We should be live. I would assume we're live now. All right, here we go. <laughs> just some people. I'm just letting some people in. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Facebook Live, uh, and, of course, our people that are joining us on Zoom. Uh, we have a really great Whiskey Wednesday tonight. Uh, uh, Gordon was just on our radio show, uh, what, like maybe a week ago, right? Two weeks ago. Yeah. About a week and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. So he was just on. So, uh, he is the, uh, he is the ambassador extraordinaire, uh, <laughs> for Glenn going and, uh, Cam do. And, uh, and he's uh, to join us tonight to actually lead us through a really nice tasting and tell us all about the distillery, the Glenn going distillery. So I, rather than me dri dribble on, I just want to make sure I get everybody in that's waiting on Zoom. And I'll get that. If anybody has any questions, if you're on Facebook Live, uh, put it in the comments. If you're on the Zoom, put it in the chat. And we'll take it from there. And uh, Gordon, you the floor is yours, my friend. Well, no, that's very kind of you, uh, Ryan. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, coming along to uh, this evening tasting for you. Um, 7 p.m. Boston time, midnight here in Glasgow. So uh, glad to be uh, beaming into your living rooms in the in the early evening. Um, great. Look, we've got we're going to taste two great whiskeys, but I want to give you a flavor of Glengoyne, the the, the brand, the uh, the distillery, um, things like that. So that's going to be really really great. So um, I'd love to just ask the room. Has anybody had Glengoyne before? Who's a regular Glengoyne drinker? Anybody stick a hand up? Yeah, there's plenty of them. Yeah, there is. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear. I mean, we the best thing about Glengoyne is we have, a, a even in the two whiskeys we have here, the 10 and the 12, two very distinctively different whiskeys. And I'm going to explain why that is. We do um, have, uh, just so you know, we do have some newbies too, Gordon. Great. Make sure you good. break them in properly. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I'm I'm first time trying Chris B. Yeah. Chris, um, I think you're gonna be a convert by the end of this, but you know, that's up to you to decide. Um, but I mean, uh, I think Barry there sitting in front of his uh his golf favorite golf hole, possibly. Barry's a bit of a Glen Goyne seems to seems to have drunk it before, I think, Barry. Um, which is great. So uh, yeah, no, look. Um, a great single malt. And, um, you know, I want to just tell you a little bit about who we are, Ian McLeod Distillers. Um, we're, a, we're a rare thing these days. We're a family run Scottish whiskey business, um, uh, a S Scottish owned whiskey business. There's not many of them. Um, we're probably the second largest family run Scotch whiskey business. And we did think about having that as our tagline, but very quickly we decided second biggest wasn't the best thing to have maybe um uh so we are we 
and and really what's really interesting about um Glen Goyne distillery is is that we purchased it in 2003 but it's been running in its current form since 1833 so you know it it it's a wonderful um distillery and you can you know I've got a couple of pictures that hopefully I can even show at some point just to uh just to take you through a little bit about the uh the distillery but let me uh let me just put it you on so you can share your screen Gordon just give me oh, that's great that's oh great. now you have the ability to do so yeah yeah great well yeah fantastic so i mean we have um the first thing to understand about Glen Goyne is it, its location. It's not far from Glasgow. It's not far from, um, you know, that, that sort of main collection of population within, within Scotland. Um, and uh, it's also got a very unique location in terms of being just on the very southern border of the Highlands. So it is a Highland single malt. Um, but actually the warehouses um, are sitting in the lowlands. It doesn't make any difference to the whiskey, but geographically, technically, they are in the lowlands, but um, from a whiskey perspective. So what if you've never had Glen Goyne, what can I tell you about it? Well, there's quite a lot I could tell you about it. I mean, the first thing is it's not a big distillery. It's, it's a distillery which is, um, which is, you know, it's a distillery which is, you know, it's something which has been, um, I'm just going to share you this here. Um, and if you can see this screen here, you can sort of just have a quick idea of where we are located in Scotland. So I'm sitting in Glasgow, just, just here. Um, and I'm probably about a 25 minute drive from Glen Goyne Distillery. Um, if anybody's been to Scotland, you may know roughly where we are, but um, pretty close to the main population area but right on that lower highland border um, and you can see the five locations the five regions of scotch whiskey there um isla campbelltown highland Speyside, and lowlands so um we're just just south of that highland line um and and that that's quite important from a historical perspective um if you think of single malt Scotch whiskey as a category, it's a pretty new category um, as a as a category. It, it, single malt was 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 made centuries ago to be put into blends. It was never a category as it is these days, um, and now it's the biggest growing category in Scotch whiskey. The biggest by value, but not by volume. It still blends, and for years, Glen Goyne was a single malt that was produced to go into blends so um it, as as most other single malts were um so it wasn't particularly focused on on us as a single malt uh, until the, the until we really took it over and expanded the range into the whiskies that we taste today so um we have a range now of a 10 a 12 um, we have a cast strength, we have a legacy, which are all on the website here. We have the 18 year old, we have a 21, we have a 25, we have a 30, and we even have a 50 year old, which we launched in the last um, uh, three to four months. So we really have a great range of whiskies. But the one thing that joins them all together, uh, and this is really, really important, is the, is the quality of the spirit that we make and the quality of the cast. So without any further ado, Ryan, I think it's correct that we should all try a whiskey. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, these, they've probably drunk half the bottle already. Well, I mean, I, I mean I've already had a <laughs> I've been I've, I've had to stay up all night to do this. So I've, had, I've already had a few already. So uh, oh, the best noise in whiskey, the best noise in whiskey. Oh, beautiful. There you go. The pop, the pop. So yeah, this is the 10 year old first everybody. And uh, I'm keen to get your thoughts on this. This is for me, beautifully approachable, beautifully drinkable. I uh, call this um, a little bit of a session whiskey. I get two or three of you, four of you around a table, a bottle of this doesn't last that long. If you're, uh, if you're, uh, you know, playing cards or watching a game or whatever, it, it disappears pretty quickly. It's very easy drinking, but I think that it, it has a really nice depth of flavor to it, though. It the is. I mean, they're very light and one dimensional. It is. It's very it's very approachable, as I would call this whiskey. It's 40 percent alcohol. This is your minimum strength a whiskey can be. 
10 years, everything is fully matured in here. So it's all from zero to, you know, 10 in the same casts and married together at the end. So uh, this is this is just a great whiskey to have in the locker in terms of, you'll know when you want to drink this. It's just a very, I don't, you know, tonight I've got it in a Glen Cairn glass, but I would normally drink this side of a rocks glass just because it's a really easy drinking whiskey and it's a great, great whiskey. I'm loving, loving the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of flavors it delivers because we use a lot of sherry casks in this whiskey. Yeah. What's great about this. If, even if you're going to like, you know, we start getting into these little bit warmer nights, uh, even here in new England, uh, of course it'll be warm one day and, and it's winter back again, the next, but yeah, yeah. as you're getting into some of these warmer nights, uh, What's great about this 10 is you can definitely throw a rock in it, uh, 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 ice in it. And um, there's plenty, even though that dulls some of the flavors, it's so flavorful that uh, it really represents a great value that it's the versatility, not only the versatility, but the depth of flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And, and as you say, in that sort of slightly warmer weather, um, great sort of whiskey to enjoy, maybe just, you know, around the barbecue with some friends or whatever. It's just a very smooth drinking whiskey. You can mix it should you wish as well. But it has this beautiful sort of toffee flavors, a little bit of that beautiful sort of um, fruitiness, which Glen Goyne is really famous for. And that's because of the way that we make this whiskey, um, which we'll come on to a little bit. But, you know, uh, very, very... Um, very very rounded but it's a very it's got this fruitiness in the background which is the signature style of the distillery how we make our spirit um and there's green apples in there as well a bit of banana banoffee pie quite a lot of banoffee pie in this i think the sort of bananas the toffees uh, those types of flavors and i'm i absolutely absolutely huge fan of this whiskey uh, it's something that i drink quite a lot of it's the 10 year old i'm not a whiskey snob i may drink in whiskey i drink anything that's good uh and it's a great entry entry whiskey for sure for sure it, what do you guys, a, well let me ask everybody else that, that yeah that's not this. What, what are you guys all thinking uh yeah, throw it up on the chat. I've got a couple right now. The apricot shortbread, I think. Drop of water. I get almonds, vanilla pudding, coffee. Um, if, if, if anybody know, wants to shout out, they can do that, surely. Can yeah, they? sure. You're just going to. Anybody see. wants to give us their thoughts? Uh, you know, I, I'd love to get people's thoughts. I think I have to go to get Barry Barry's thoughts for the Barry's sitting in the middle of the road outside Glen Goyne there. So uh, That's exactly where that where <laughs> Barry would be sitting would actually be the road. Yeah, I'm actually right across the road when I took the picture. <laughs> about a year and a half to two years ago, I was uh, up there and had a wonderful time walking through the distillery. Uh, it's small, it's small, it's small but perfectly formed. It really is a, a perfect little place. And just so everybody knows, it's been closed, you know, for months. And uh, we're we're looking not too bad with COVID over here at the moment. We've done a, a stack of vaccinations. So we've done over like 35 million vaccinations so we've done over half of our adult population so we are we're, we're looking okay on COVID I wish Europe was looking as good but we're looking okay so things are beginning to open up over here which is good we're we're actually uh just at, like here at the store at all 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 of our staff has received their first uh vaccinations great so we're looking at the uh, beginning of May uh mm -hmm. the whole staff being fully vaccinated well, that's fantastic so, um massachusetts was slow on the on the draw but yeah. uh has really uh stepped it up so massachusetts is actually i think doing a pretty good job uh, as far as the vaccinations yeah. go no and i have to say our, our mob are doing quite well on vaccinations much better than europe so anyway let's move off that um so barry yeah you've been there so barry you know and anybody else who's been there please chip in but Barry, for people who've not been to Glen Goyne, how would you describe it in a few words? Uh, small, intimate, friendly staff. Um, just, uh, it's what you expect out of a distillery. It, yeah. It's it, no frills, but they know what they're doing. The people there know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add my, my two cents in there. Copper. <laughs> copper, copper and more copper. So anybody who's visited several different distilleries uh, in their life, I think that's the one glaring thing that really stands out about the still house is just like everything, the, 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 
the lines going in and out are just our copper jacketed lines. I mean, they're just, um, it's everywhere. And that, and I think that's part of the thing, right? Slow, distill it slow, get uh, a lot of, a lot of copper uh, contact. Absolutely. And, and I think what I'll just do here is I'm just going to share that picture here because this is a great picture for everybody. Can, everybody can now see where Barry took his picture um, just down there in the right hand entrance point of the distillery. So you can really see that it is not a big distillery um, in this building, which says Glengoyne here. That is the still house. And that's also where the mash tun is it's also where the fer fermenters the washbacks are so you know it, it, it's not a big distillery it produces one million liters a year which in single malt terms is not big it's not tiny but it's not you know give you a little bit of context the new mccallan distillery is about 16 17 million liters so so we are scarce we are family run but we are focused on making great whiskey and that is exactly ryan's point about copper we, we, everything we do is all about the quality of the spirit that we produce. So, so, um, um, that's Dumgoyne Hill behind. So you can climb that and, um, take a wee dram in a, in a, in a hip flask up there. That's always nice. Um, but yeah, you can see not a big distillery, no room to expand, but it is what, if, if you have in your mind, what a Scotch whiskey distillery looks like, then Glengoyne is pretty much what you would expect. So uh, it's a it's a fantastic little place to visit, and it's a bro. You've been I've been fortunate. I've gotten to uh, visit this distillery several times, yeah. and uh, we've had a, a lovely uh, dinner there too, which was uh, fantastic. Up in the uh, the room, it's like behind the distillery, yeah, right? Yeah, you can't see it from here, yeah, but I can't up see behind, it. Yeah, gorgeous. Up by, yeah. Absolutely. Up by the top, up by the waterfall at the back. Yeah. yeah. There's a nice Beautiful. waterfall in the back. It's very picturesque, especially in the back. Uh, it's just like this little hidden gem mm. that's got a highway running. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's got a, it's got a road. I wouldn't, a busy well, it's road. A highway, but it's a busy road. Yeah. A busy road, fairly busy road. But, busy. Um, yeah. I mean, so, so just to reiterate, this picture is technically from the lowlands. Um, that is just a tax line that was done many, many years ago. It does not affect the uh, the, uh, the, um, the 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 whiskies in any way, apart from just you know a, a fun fact to know. If you if you want to know a fun fact about Glengoyne Distillery, I think it's the only distillery that actually sits across two of the regions. So um, uh, that that makes it pretty unique. There's plenty of other things that make it really unique. The one thing that you will always be rest assured with Glengoyne is it will not be smoky it never has been smoky there's none of that peat in this area so it's always unpeated so um yeah no, what are we all thinking of the 10 year old before we move on a little bit uh Emra what do you think of that do you like this one Emra I do enjoy it quite a bit I found that maybe US is a little luckier on this front where you said 40 percent alcohol we are bottling at 43 Oh. which is quite whiskous and, you know, mouth coating. Really oh, you know, if it's at 43, you take 43. I, I'm, there no you go. I, should, I can't believe that. I can't believe no I complaints. forgot that. It, it, it's, I was just looking at my bottle. It was 40 and I completely forgot where I was talking. Yeah. 43 is only going to make this whiskey a little bit better. So uh, you're, uh, yeah, you, you'll get more of that in a little bit more intensity on the nose, but just a great, great, um, great, great whiskey. So uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, anybody else want to comment on, on any of these? Anybody else got a, a thought? Scott, I'm enjoying where Scott is. Scott's in, in a lovely part of the world out there drinking whiskey. That's exactly what you should be doing. Fantastic. Um, what about Henry? Henry, do you get any questions? Any, any, any thoughts on this whiskey, Henry? You're on mute, sir. I think, I think Rich put it pretty well. It is viscous and mouth coating. It's, it yeah. does have it does have some weight to it. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. A lot of tents don't have that. I, it does. And I'll tell you why that is. It, it, a lot of whiskeys at this, in this area, in this sort of price point, if you want to class it by this, um, are mainly bourbon casks or bourbon cask dominant, which is a lighter style of maturation. Um, 
sherry casks bring in a richer, thicker style. So you get a bit more weight coming through from the sherry cask maturation, which just gives it a little bit more of those thicker toffee flavors, a little bit more darker, a little bit of that sort of, you know, almost stewed fruits, cooked fruit sort of style a little bit, but there's still that zesty apples coming through. It's a great, uh, really, really very, very, very different style of whiskey to Lagavulin for sure. Um, but it's a great, uh, a great entry whiskey giving you real big flavors as well. So, uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it. Gordon, I'm enjoying it very much, sir. Ah, there he is. Hello. Michael, how are you? I'm well, sir. How are you? I'm very well. So we've joined by Michael. Michael is works with, he's my colleague, so he's based out in Long Island. And uh, Michael, Hello. good evening. Good to see you. And uh, Michael is, is, is a... Uh, is a fantastic colleague of ours working out there and working up in, in, in the sort of northeast as well. So, so yeah, good to see you, my friend. Are you enjoying the 10 year old? You know what? This is my first time trying it. I have to say it's pretty damn special. Uh, <laughs> all jokes aside, yes, uh, of course. <laughs> it's one of my favorite drams. Um, and you know what? It's funny. I'm reading the comments a little bit. Uh, hello, yeah. everybody. I have two, two puppies that I'm trying to train right now. They're not mute. It's been a bit of a headache, so I'm, uh, I, a couple things instead of a, a slight board for me. But um, a great job as always, Gordon. Yes, uh, I, I noticed one of the people who I think was the first time I tried. We're going back a few minutes. Who uh, who noted almonds with a drop, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. and uh, that that hit it right on the head for me because uh, I guess you know everybody's palate is different. But absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah me right off the bat uh so yeah good good one on that and and i'm a little bit jealous uh emra uh because we got to jump up to the 12 year old to get to 43 abv um where i am at uh so it, it, i hope you're enjoying that little extra punch but, but yeah yeah dram and uh great job as always and ryan thank you very much for having me um is is a great thing you got going on man no problem glad you could join us tonight and I'm just checking. I'm making sure now because um, we've had a couple different ones uh, in. Uh, uh, they're all 43, so everybody's got. Well, everybody's everybody's winning. Uh, I, I'm winning. winning. I, I'm stuck at 40, but hey, it's still a great whiskey at 40s. And I yeah, think. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you, aside in the states now, it is being bottled at 43. Uh, it was being bottled at 40, uh, along with the 12, which is also 43. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the UK 40. We need to sort that out. We'll yeah, need, we need to change to that. that. But we need to talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll blame it on Brexit. No, we won't blame it on Brexit. Let's not blame <laughs> it on Brexit. Um, so, so yeah, that's a, that's a 10 year old. And, I, you know, um, for me, what I love about the two whiskeys we're going to try, the 12 is completely it's not completely different. There's still lots of Glen Goyne in there, but it's a very different experience. And uh, I want to just give everybody a little flavor of Glen Goyne Distillery as much as I can. I, I'm going to take you on a little tour around the distillery, okay? It's not going to be a long tour, but I just want to show you what it looks like. I want to show you the idiosyncrasies of this distillery. Um, and uh, so just give me a second. I'm going to share. Uh, I'm going to share that. Uh, and this should take us round. We'll get past this slide. Um, um, hold on. Um, that's the 10 year old. So you can see there, that's how that you've all got the box. That's the new packaging of the, the Glen Goyne 10 year old. We have the, the tube right now. I think that's what's in the yeah. US right now is the tube. Correct. So Glen Goyne rebranded about three to five, three or four months ago. Not a huge change, an, ev an evolution and a revolution. But the one thing that we, we really focused on, you can see the goose in the middle of the label. That is the, the Glengoyne means the Valley of the Wild Goose. So that is why the goose is more prominent. The name is very similarly written. The pack is not hugely different, but the one thing that makes it really stand out these days is that that box along with every other single box of the new design is 100% sourced in Scotland, 90 odd percent made from recycled material and 100% recyclable. So that is a really big thing, which the tubes are not. And so you will see these new packs coming into the market over the next 
few months even more than they are at the moment and rest assured everything that we produce now is recyclable because Glengoyne is actually one of the most green distilleries in the whole of Scotland which is a real testament to the family run business that we are so I'm going to take you just on a little tour um, there's a tasting note in the breakdown of the 10 year old you can see on the outside rim we have the breakdown of the casks and you can see that we have the European oak sherry casks and the American oak sherry casks, which bring in very distinctive flavors, and the refill casks, which bring in uh, that beautiful sort of green apple and fresh fruit note, which comes out a little bit within the uh, within the uh, the ten year old. So, just take a note of those. Have, well, don't take a note. Just have an idea of those types of casks, and to see that amount of sherry cask first fill in a whiskey of this age is is fabulous in terms of in terms of the taste that it's giving you, the toffee, the nuts, which people picked up on, um, the oakiness, a little bit of that licorice sometimes that you pick up on the nose. Um, so that's the sort of note of the 10-year-old. So um, let's just keep moving on this. So, so this is the mill that we start our production process. So I'm going to tell you a very quick story about this mill, and I'm going to play this video as we move on. This is the Bobby Mill, and this is where we take our malted barley, and we we will we will pass it through this, and we will create our grist. And this is really important. You can see the malted barley in the window there at the top. Um, that will come through this mill, and um, that will we need to grind that down to give us allow us to access those starches inside, which have been modified through the malting process. Um, this is the one thing every single distillery in Scotland has either a bobby mill um, or um, there's another make of mill uh, and they're all pretty much red and they were all from the early sort of 20th century and they were all made so well that the companies went out of business because nobody needed to replace them because they were so well engineered. Um, and that's a Porteous was the other company. And so that is why um, the mills are so just fabulously made bits of equipment, proper engineering. And so the really, really important part of the process. But what I want to show you now is the first fundamental part of making whiskey, which is the, the mashing. And you can see this is our mash ton, as we would call it. And in comes from this bin up here, that grist at about broken down grist, which will be combined with hot water at about 63.5 degrees centigrade. So in Fahrenheit, I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head, but quite hot water coming in, we will be, that hot water will mix with that grist. You can see the paddles going around, which allows that water to soak through that grist and turn those starches that we were talking about, those soluble starches into sugar. I I'd like to point out that if you, as you panned up from that and you did the first one, that is the first contact with copper. Yeah. The, even the, the grist coming into the mash tun is in copper. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, you can see this copper, there's copper on the top of the mash tun as well. You know, so there is a, this is a copper heavy yeah. distillery. But yeah, this grist will come flying in about 3.8 metric tons of it with about, uh, it's about 15,000 liters of water initially. And then we will add more water at different temperatures to ensure that we take all of that sugary liquid that will soak through the bottom of this mash tun. And that is all about getting that sugary liquid that we call a wort. Um, and why do we need that? Because yeast loves sugar and that's the next stage of the process is creating a beer so uh i'll just uh show you the next stage we'll come to the distillation in a minute but let's move into the the uh the fermentation vessels as we would call them the washbacks um and this is where we're going to create that beer that at about up to about eight percent somewhere in the region of 60 hours of fermentation in these vessels that sugary liquid is pumped in and in goes that the, the yeast, um, and we will have a, you can see here, the fermentation happening, um, beautiful fruity flavors being created here, um, and a lot of froth as well. Um, and that is all about, you know, the, these are Oregon pine washbacks, so the, the wood is sourced from America, 
Um, and uh, this is uh, this is all fundamentally how we start to create our spirits. So, uh, Gordon, as um, yeah. uh, uh, both you said about sixty hours of fermentation. Yeah. How does that sort of stack up? Is that pretty average time, or is that? That's yeah, a little bit longer than average, I think. I mean, we, we we'll do longer at the weekend as well, be, just because of shifts and things like that. But uh, sixty hours is is about right. It suits us for Glengoyne. Um, the, the, the yeast will probably have, have done its job by then. The froth will have died down and you'll be sitting there with a, a fruity, a fruity beer. Um, and so, yeah, it's about right. I mean, um, we, we've used the same, we use the same yeast for a long time. Consistency in yeast is important for us. So it's a, yeah, it's a, it, it's on the longer side. Yeah. The, there's distilleries that do longer. There's distilleries that do shorter. Okay. Um, and so we have this beer of 8.5%, and then we will fire that into the furthest away still. So if you ever go to a Scotch whiskey distillery and you want to know which still is the first distillation, look for the windows, look for the sight glasses. That's where you're going to see that beer when it's heated up, it's going to froth up, and they do not want that froth to go into the condenser there at the back. That will damage the condenser, so they will alter the heat. And then the low wines which is the product of the first distillation is split between the second stills into here and you can see more copper contact and look at all the pipe work in the background copper all this copper contact is really really important to developing the fruity style of Glengoyne. so these condensers at the back are very simply just have lots of cold water pipes inside them and that hot vapor will come in, hit those cold water pipes, and will uh, turn into a back into a liquid. Um, and so that is simply distillation. But the one thing to remember about this is if I was to take you to 10 different Scotch distilleries in, in one day, the one thing that you would notice that would be very different would be the shape of all the stills. And that will give you an indication maybe of how a Scotch is going to taste. Um, and you can see here, we we use two stills for the second distillation. That's all about more copper contact. And, and, and that's what makes our whiskey so fruity, makes our spirit so fruity. And so when we combine that new make spirit, as you can see on the left, coming out of the spirit safe with brilliant casks from Spain and bourbon casks from America, that's how we make our Glengoyne. So that's a little tour of the distillery. Um, and it, Michael, when you were there, and I know we, we're going to get you back over as soon as possible, but the one thing that really strikes you about it is it's a very manual distillery. It's not, it's run by, it's run by people. It's not run by machines. And there's, there's, there's idiosyncrasies, which you have to understand how this distillery works. And I think that's what strikes you about it, isn't it? A hundred percent. I mean, the, the, the words that come to mind, if we're going to do a little word association, would be like old school in the best possible way. Um, it's just a charming distillery. Uh, I had the, the pleasure of, of going to Glen Goyne first, then we went up to Speyside to, to, to go to Tam Dew, which is a totally different beast, totally different animal. Um, not quite as uh, charming, shall we say, uh, but, but very, very high tech is where I'm going with this. Um, whereas Glenn Goyne, it's, you almost feel like you're in a time machine going back to like an old school distillery doing things, mm. you know, or, you know, high tech. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. just such a charming vibe and a wonderful experience. I, I would really highly recommend anybody who's in the area uh, to go visit the distillery. One great thing about Glenn Goyne is it's not the biggest household name of a brand by any means but if you look it up and, and you see how many tourists visit annually i mean i'll be talking pre-covid it would kind of blow your mind um now geographics has something to do with that it, it's just such a if you're visiting scotland and you're you're going to you know glasgow or whatever and you're on that trail or whatever i mean you're, you're welcoming people to see the distillery who wouldn't normally go out of their way per se to go see a distillery which is great mm -hmm. but it, 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 it really is such a unique and beautiful experience. And I'm not saying that because I work for the company, I promise you. It's, it, it really is. I, 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 
Yes, absolutely. I'm I want to just share something with you with in the first video. I'm going to just show you it again. Uh, and I want you to just, I'm going to pause it and, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So we were talking about mashing and, and we were talking about the grist coming in. Uh, I'm just going to, as we go up to look at the grist bin, I'm just going to pause it about there. Now you see just here that you've got the windows that show you that the grist is filtering into the, 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 the mash tun. Now you can see that there's chips in the paint here. You can see that um, there's, you know, it looks like it's been hit by something. Uh, and it has been hit by something because the the mashman or mash lady we do have a, we we do have some young ladies working in production now which is fantastic to see. Um, it do, one of the idiosyncrasies of this bit of production is that the grist does start to sometimes block as it comes into the into the mash tun. So what 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 the the, the, the mash lady mash man will do will hit it with a broom. And they will hit the side of the, the the bin there with a broom, and they will then see the grist through the windows filtering back down again. And they may have to do that two or three times each time there's grist going into the mash tun. And that just shows you that this you can see here. There's lots of there's no computers. This is a manual distillery, um, but it's a that's just a little idiosyncrasy of uh, of how uh, of how Glen Goyne works. I like I like that you stopped there because it shows the, the uh, and I believe that's the hot water coming in with the copper. Yeah. Um, yeah. So getting hot water on that copper that's coming in. And, and, and it's a good point to actually at this point to sort of like point out. So in the, in, in our field, in a lot of the, in everybody that's watching right now, we, we, we see a lot about whiskeys and in, and, in spirits in general, people always use the term handmade. Now, if I was to make like some sort of meme of what handmade means, people out there would have probably this vision of somebody's hands over a Bunsen burner that was actually distilling with their hands. And in the industry, it'd be a red button that somebody pushes start. Yeah. That's handmade. Yeah, but, yeah. What, but what you have with Glenn going is it really, this is what people talk about when they, when they talk about handmade. There's only maybe a couple other people that go even one depth further than this, but there's not many because you have to like a, a lot of what they do is they're looking at dials. They're, they're going by feel. They're hitting a bin. They're, they're making sure that everything is working properly and they're monitoring each part of that, not on the computer screen, but no. by actually being in the distillery well said. for each set. Well, it's it's genuinely experience that drives the quality of the spirit. It's not machine, uh, and it's understanding of how the distillery works, but also the idiosyncrasies of the things you need to do as well. And that's uh, that's why it's such a special distillery. And we have some amazing guys who've been there for years. Um, we had Duncan, who retired this time last year, who'd been there for forty three years. Uh, and you know, there's a, the the most important thing is there's a lot of knowledge in that head, and getting it out of that head and getting it into other people's heads is really important. So, uh, yeah, fab, a f fabulous way of describing it. I mean, ha small batch, handmade, hand selected is is absolutely uh, absolutely uh, rich. We're just about to try the twelve year old, <laughs> sir. Um, uh, the uh, is is an overused term, but it absolutely applies to. Uh, to Glenn going so on that but I think fine. but I think that's also part of it and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm making rich rich you can try the 12 right now if you want. <laughs> but <laughs> join me rich I'm, I'm ahead of you as well my friend but that's sort of the thing that we're talking about is that when you start looking at how what this comes in at the prices that you pay for this product um in comparison to to other places mm -hmm. that are much more automated and uh much more computer driven you're still at a relatively inexpensive price compared to what you're get for what you're getting, um, as far yeah. as as uh, as the hand touches that go into this product along the way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a prime example of that uh, is is it we're not a commercially driven business. Uh, it sounds a really silly thing to say, of course we are, but we're not commercially driven in terms of shareholders and in terms of a whole range of other uh, sort of bigger business sort of prerogatives or you know perspective 
we're a family business that is, and you speak to Leonard and you speak to the guys and, uh, you know, and it's like, we want to make great whiskey. That's ultimately what we want to do. And so if you look at the, the way Glengoyne works, it's very inefficient actually, and it can produce a million liters, but that's because there's a little block in the system because the way that the stills fill up is quite time consuming. And, and the way that we distill actually is very time consuming because we don't overheat the stills. We hold them at the boiling point of alcohol. Uh, and all this leads to being actually, as I call it, beautifully inefficient. Um, uh, and that means that we produce a million liters a year. If we actually came in and changed the whole plant, we could probably, well, not all of it, but sped it up a little bit. We could probably produce 20% more liquid a year. But that doesn't mean you're going to get a better whiskey. It absolutely probably means you'll get a worse whiskey because your spirit's not going to be as good. Well said. And if I may, I, um, that's by design. Yeah, yeah it is. That's, that's, that's by design. That's, that's, that's what we do. So Yeah. And so that's why when you taste the 12. Yeah, we'll go to the 12 now. <laughs> when you taste the 12, this is definitely at 43 here, uh, just to let you know. Um, um, the 12 um, is a very, you know, we, 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 we brought the 12 in to be a very different experience to the 10 year old. We don't just want whiskeys to be, well, it's two more, two years older. You should buy the 10 or buy the 12, depending on how you're feeling. Now, I know a lot of people here have bought both, but you should drink them about how you're feeling. And so out these two whiskeys, this is more aperitif, the 12. And the, te the 10 is actually a little bit more digestive. It's a little bit more richer. It's a little bit more, this is zestier and punchier and a little bit more, I don't know, sort of vibrant potentially. And whereas the 10 is a little bit more chilled out and a little bit more, you know, whatever. Um, and, and I think that's what I love about this, the 12 year old. It's, it's got bourbon casks in it. It's got that slightly vanilla. It's got that, that you would expect from bourbon casks, but there's still sherry you know, casks in there as well. A phenomenally well-rounded drink. In my, in, yeah, in my. very, very. Yeah, but you know, one of you know one of the things when we were, we were, we were sort of talking about putting this whole thing together and what we were going to do and how we we're going to do it, working with seven fifty bottles uh, in in a tasting that we're doing right now can be difficult because you know you you have to keep uh, price in mind when you do things. Yeah, one of the reasons that I agreed to do what what we did and we gave everybody a very good price on the two bottles was doing it's a it's almost as rare doing the 10 and the 12 together mm. it's like this little mini spectrum of what glenn going produces Absolutely it's right. it's not just the same whiskey two years older right. it's Correct. a different whiskey it's a different feel it's a different taste mm -hmm. it just happens to be two years older but i think that that's sort of besides the point and showing right. people like these two styles more than I, I almost want to consider it stylistically different rather than just mm. age difference. R Ryan, I completely would agree. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, Gordon. Um, that's an that's an outstanding point. And, and you know what? I I'm a uh, I'm a Scotch guy. I don't only drink the brands that that I sell. Um, and you know that is so well said because I can only think of a handful of distilleries that kind of hit on that with a two-year age difference as well as we do. Um, so I, I'm really glad you brought that up. That's something that not a lot of people say. say. I, I totally agree with that. Um, and it's not something that, that's, that's really common. I'm not going to name names, name distilleries. There's so many wonderful distilleries out there. But, but you really hit the nail on the head, in my opinion, because this is a lot of times you just get the same products with a couple well and the other, the other point I want to make of that, without a finishing barrel, mm. it's it's not it's not this, like the same whiskey, yeah. but we finished it different. Right, right. right. These themselves Absolutely. stand on their own. Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. And we don't we don't finish any of our whiskeys. All of our whiskeys are fully matured. So whether that is uh, the ten, the twelve, or the legacy, which is which is a you know, a sherry cask influenced whiskey at the front end. And uh, we've got that beautiful sort of a little bit richer than these, the, 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 the cask strength, which if you like stronger, stronger whiskeys, the cask strength is at, I'm now answering Rich's question. He's just booked it in there. The cask strength is just fabulous. It's probably it's awesome. the cask strength is like a combination of these two whiskeys together at high strength. There you go. Imagine that. That's what the cask strengths are like. 
Um, and then the 18 year old is actually more like the 10 year old. The 18 gives you more of that rich sort of darker fruits. And then the 21 is like Christmas in a glass, really. So oh, yeah. different. So, yeah. I, I can't wait to come back around. Hopefully we can do this again with the, with the more sherry expressions. Um, and, and you're really going to see quite a jump. Uh, no better, no worse. Just a different kind of vibe from our whiskeys. Uh, yeah. when you really incorporate that, that sherry, um, yeah. I mean, you know, that's, a, that's the uh, I will point out that the cast strength uh, was my favorite until we came out with, uh, and we're going to talk about other things, but until we came out with chapter one, and yeah. that sort of took its place a little bit, um, um, but only for a short time. And yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that. But the 12, now that you have both of these together, and I would, I would encourage everybody to add a couple drops of water in each one of these. My new thing now, by the way, is I bought that very, fr uh, very famous uh, French sparkling water, and I let it go uh, uh, flat. Oh wow! Okay. And Perry now, by uh, the yeah. what's that? And, I let it flat, and now that's what the water I started using because the minerality. Of interesting. It, I, I, uh, I'm going to steal that from you. I think uh, is is pretty interesting, and I can't really take credit of it. Widow Jane, the. Uh, Oh, and I'm gonna I am not thinking her name. The blender for Widow Jane is the one that actually suggested that we do this. Randall and I did a test on our radio show and we actually could taste the difference. Wow. It was it was very odd because we always use like purified water. That's what we always use. But it, it um with whiskey especially, it, it it especially when you're you're adding a lot, a lot of times we're trying to get we're trying to take out alcohol to taste flavors more than anything else. It's not the way necessarily you would drink it um we're, we're we're doing a more scientific approach to find flavors in the whiskey so we're, we're we're watering it down more than we normally you normally would drinking it but um using that little trick really uh we, we noticed really threw some other flavors into the mix that we didn't we weren't finding with just using uh um purified water i will be trying that tomorrow after work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah, famous yeah. green Italian bottle works well too. You are right, Art. The, you need you just uh, very good, and he's showing us his bottle. See, I prefer Pellegrino as well. Yeah, Whoever. Pellegrino's <laughs> fine. You can do either one. Yeah. You can do either one. I've just uh, got something to just for for Cheryl's question. Cheryl, we still do the teapot dram, uh, only available from the distillery. So yeah, we don't. don't we can't get it. At, we no, can't rub it in, it, Gordon. Don't rub it I'm in. I, I, well, I mean, I've, come I've, on, mate. We, we, it is, it, Cheryl obviously knows about it, so I just wanted to share it with her. Um, so this 12, it's very different. I'm loving the vibrancy of this, uh, you know. It's got this, it's got vanilla, it's got all the things that you would want in there, but there's still that Glengoyne style. It's really, really very different to the 10, and I'm going back and forth between them here, and the, you the get 10's that little got... That well, now you, go that little spice of cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. That little just, touch of cinnamon. Yeah. Now, that's what I was getting at, though, too, is I think if you had a couple drops of water, taste these, and then um, then go back and forth a little bit, because then you can really start, when you go back and forth, the differences really pop, uh, and yeah. you really notice it. A drop of water in the 12, and you will see the sweetness level go up quite a lot. It'll be sweeter with a drop of water in it. It'll be a bit creamier and butterier on, on the mouth. The 10... I find you get a little bit more of the, sh the European oak sherry intensity coming through, but I mean, it's, it's, that's a drop or two, but they're just both great and always good to, when you're doing something like this is to add a drop of water to it. And just so you, you know, the, so that, you know, then two or three weeks time, that, oh, I actually quite liked it with a drop of water. I'll try that again. You know, that's the beauty. I think of the light oakiness really shines through on the 10 as opposed to the 12. I think that kind of dissipates for me, for my palate on the 12. It kind yeah. of substitutes with a couple, you know. Yeah. No, I, will I, let, I, will let, uh, I will let everybody know, because we have like 24, 25 people on tonight, that you've all received an email from, uh, from us, from uh, Bob Leland, I believe, sent it out for us. Uh, and I know he's on there somewhere. I haven't seen him, but uh, I don't have everybody up. Um, you got it, uh, what we call a Zoom flash. So um, all the different expressions that we have of Glenn going are going to be 10% off uh, tonight. So if you want to try any of the others, you got a break. You got a great price on the set, by the way. It, it did. Um, 
and I think I don't think it I don't think it comes up on the thing, but you can still uh, get the set if you want, because I know some people might want to take advantage of that. Um, that's still available, but but all the other stuff at, at checkout will give you a uh, should give you a ten percent discount on all of it, which brings me to one of my favorite, uh, my new favorite. Uh, I do like the cast strike, and we have that in stock. Is the Legacy Series Chapter One bottled in 2019? This is also unchill filtered, as the other, and 48 percent ABV. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so this whiskey was this whiskey was a. I'm, I'm I'm just talking about it because I have it and I want to drink it. So it's so go good. <laughs> it's we fabulous. We out of it in New York, Ryan. I I yeah, I'm jealous right now. We we're we're yeah. on to the second uh, in New York, but that is a fantastic. Yeah. And the second one is very different and it will be coming. Um, but that one is probably the most European oak sherry influenced this side of the 21 year old. Right. Um, and it's got 40, 40, 45 percent first fill European oak sherry. It's got a lot of those richer sort of tannic raisins, dark chocolate type flavors as well dark color no age but my god it's a wonderful whiskey you could tell by the color it's around about a 10 year old somewhere in that area average age but there'll be some 12s and you know um brilliant brilliant whiskey um and certainly one that i would if you like that slightly richer sherry tonight might be worth going for um, as i said the next one would be the cast strength which is like a com combination of these two at 59 odd percent alcohol um and then the 18 which is 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 fab and the 21 are both fabulous as well so this is uh just so everybody knows the chapter one is my poster child for non-age statement whiskeys because hmm. it, it's it's it, it's around it's 80 dollars um you'll get a discount on that tonight if you buy one tonight i think i was able to grab another case so it might be like 12 or so in stock maybe 11 because I think I'm drinking one of them now. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but that it's like the poster child because people always say like, you know, oh, it's a non-age statement. And I think we're finally getting people to like, you got to judge the whiskey as the whiskey uh, and not worry about the age statement. And there's going to be some non-age statements that are obviously better than others. Mm -hmm. um, this one for $80, I think, uh, or, or ranks up there with the best of them. Um, and I'd agree. but I can convince people that even though there's not an age statement on it, this is a whiskey you should be buying. They yeah. come back and buy a second. That's how, uh, that's how it, it, this it, one goes. On you go, I, Michael. If I may, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, all right. I'm a little jealous. If he has it in stock and you are in the area, this is, I work for the, I, I work for Ian McLeod. This is my last bottle. Um, we are we are out of stock uh unfortunately um this this is it for me uh i agree with everything that he has just said uh if he has it available i would really run to the store and go get it it's a great price obviously he he, he takes care of it. It, it is a fantastic dram i would run to the store immediately and get it because i'm jealous i, I it's worth the trip to Massachusetts for me, I might buy a couple bottles just to have for my personal collection. And 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 la ladies and gentlemen, this will be coming, and this is chapter two, and this is much more bourbon forward, so it's going to be totally lighter different. color, but yeah. a totally different whiskey. So it's on its way. That's on the ships. So um, yeah, although not stuck in the Suez Canal, which is good. Um, I, I, I'm going to say something too, like I, to be honest with you, and uh, these two gentlemen are here with us tonight, so. Uh, if I didn't think that I would just let this go and I wouldn't say anything. Glenn going lineup straight through from the 10 all the way up still represents one of the best values that is available right now from almost any distillery in Scotland. Um, each, each one is uniquely different, but all of them outstanding and all of them, you know, it's Glenn going. Mm, the the genetic lineup through the there's a there's a, a theme that runs through all of them that you can uh point to and that quality and that time spent making this whiskey goes straight through um yeah. even the 21 at the I, I forgot what the pricing is on that one I, I, i'm not even looking now but i even that one is a it is still a uh, a very good value for what you're getting um in the product so 
small distillery, hands on. Yeah. I mean, you, you're looking for this is the type of things you're looking for. This is the undiscovered secret that you're now all privy to. And, and the other thing, and it, this really just backs up our credentials I make whiskey. Every single bottle of Glengoyne is a natural color. You're just, yeah. you know, it's a naturally presented product. So when you see, when you see a darker color, I'm going to show you what I mean by that very quickly in terms of just moving on. Uh, I'll come and I'm, and I'm you know, I, I think this is a really interesting way of just showing you how we make our whiskey because from the distillery gordon i think yeah, I know going yeah what a this, great room that is this is a this is a great um little way of explaining scotch whiskey maturation and and uh, you know i've had a lot of people from the scotch whiskey industry the guys that came up with this at glengoyne fabulous fabulous way of explaining scotch whiskey maturation so I just said to you the legacy uh, whiskey, which is the one which I, I um, is available tonight. We're using a lot of European oak sherry. So you can see the darker colors coming from the European oak sherry. Um, we, we, we use um, in our in our 10 year old, we use American oak and European oak sherry. In our 12 year old, we use bourbon casks and, and uh, European oak sherry. All of our whiskeys up to our 21 year old we have an element of refill casks in there as well so so you can see the rough colors over a period of 29 30 years here and you can see that european oak is delivering that darker color why because it's european oak um the american oak sherry casks a slightly lighter color a different different style of of glengoyne coming out in that and then you move on to the bourbon cast. These will be vanilla, citrusy, lots of Glengoyne flavor coming through here because the maturation is a little bit lighter. And then the refill casks are effectively refills of any of the other three, ones that we've used before. Um, and so we've taken a sort of average color of those. But what that shows you firstly is how quickly the color comes on in a whiskey. In the first five, five years you have all the color action certainly the first 10 compared to the last 20 in all of those cases but the other thing you also see is the angel share and how that angel share disappears over the time um and the final thing that this tells you uh is you can also see if you look at under where it says bourbon cast you can see that the wood is toasted on the inside so the wood round the, the wood that frames the bottles is charred, sorry, heavily charred. That's what bourbon casts are for about a minute on average. But actually the sherry casts from Spain are lightly toasted. So the, the oak opens up much in a very different way. It's a little bit like putting a bit of bread in a toaster, which you would do for a, a sherry cask, or blasting it very quickly with a blowtorch. That's the sort of difference. That's my favorite room in the distillery. Very well said, Gordon, as always. I, I, I think this is a great room, Michael, but I really like the bar. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't think that counted. I'm sorry. <laughs> We've known so, each yeah. other too long at this point. Yeah. You yeah. Know but one. that just is a, and you can see the different size casts that we use at the bottom. That is a really, you know, because we're naturally colored and we want to talk about how good our casks are because we spend so much money on them. A sherry cask is $1,500, for example. Um, you know, from Spain, they take six years to make these casks in Spain. Um, and then we get our bourbon casks from the big bourbon producers, Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, all those types of guys who are producing bourbon for four to six years in their rack warehouses in Kentucky. And we will get those casks and our refill casks are really, really important because you forget the importance of refill casks. Bourbon cannot refill their casks. We can um, and uh, the key thing about refill casks is you're probably going to get the two cast types on the left hand side. You'll get more of Glengoyne style coming through and, the, and, and certainly in the European oak, you get a little bit more of that cask influence. But the key thing about making great single malts and, and Ryan said it is how you use all of these casks or some of them, but you still taste Glengoyne through all of it. And that's how you make great single malt. Well said. Well said. Uh, listen, I want to, first of all, uh, 
you know, um, I want to thank uh, both of you gentlemen. Uh, Michael was a surprise tonight, and thank you very much. Oh, for guys, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, I hope you guys have learned a little bit about Glenn going enough to uh, maybe, uh, I think a couple of you have already bought a couple anyways, um, um, to uh, continue on the uh, path of trying to uh, trying their other whiskeys. I think you'll be pleasantly Absolutely. surprised. Um, but I want to thank you gentlemen for joining us tonight, especially uh, Gordon. It's very late there. That's yeah, okay. He's, he's a very old man, and we have to let him get his. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I need my beauty sleep. Uh, it, no. Well, you looks like you haven't been getting enough then. No, I haven't. I haven't. I ha <laughs> no, you're quite right. I have not. Um, all I would say, it, it, you know, Ryan's got all the stuff there. If you want a little bit more information, obviously the website has tasting videos and things like that that can give you oh. a little bit more more information on the on the on the whiskeys. But speaking of that, yes, go to Glenn Going's website too. But go go to the. There's a, uh, did you put it up there? But there is no, a I really haven't. good one on wood uh, at the Tam Do there uh, is. website. There we, is. That's, that's a story for another night, but I can't right. wait. But, but, but I'm saying, but if you're interested in that, wow. go to the Tam Do website and, and watch the, uh, the one on the wood. There's a little film yeah. on, the, on it, that. It, it, it is. Stayside. Yeah, I'm that? sorry, Gordon. Tell them about Spain to Space. Well, out. yeah. No, so Tam Do's our sister distillery. Yeah. And Tam Do, the one thing that makes Tam Do different to pretty much every other single malt, just to touch on Tamdu very, very quickly to give you a bit of context about this video. Uh, it only uses sherry cast. So it only uses, uh, it only uses in first fill and refill, these sherry cask American oak or sherry cask European oak. It does not use any of the other casts. So, uh, so, so with Tamdu using the same quality, you know, production and, and the same quality casks, those casts that we use for Tamdu also come to Glen Goyne. So it's the same suppliers. So the video, although it's got Tamdu on it and explains a lot about what is important to Tamdu, it is absolutely relevant to sherry casks. And if you want to learn about sherry casks, and, and, and I could talk to you for three hours about sherry casks if you really I'm sorry want. to do this, Ryan. Yeah, I, I opened um, up. No, no, it's great. That's exactly yeah. the information uh, they can. It's a good thing to finish on. Gordon. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the thing to do would be to go to the Tamdu website. I'll, I'll send you a link to where to have a look at this at this uh, at this um, video, because it, it really will help you explain what is what is an American oak sherry cask? What's I don't understand what that is. How does what is a sherry cask? Uh, you know, it, it will help you explain a little bit about why that is. And it's just under this part here. I'm just going to copy this into the into the uh, yeah, and if anybody doesn't do it chat. um also send it to me and what i'll do is i'll have uh uh I'll have bob send everybody that's oh. on here tonight the link so it's, it's well there it's well worth it guys trust me there you go it's, it's 12 it's 12 it there 12 minutes of your life uh it's worth watching it with a dram this evening because you will understand a little bit more although it says tam do and tam do is a great great whiskey and we could do the same again for tam do um it will help you understand sherry casks. And, uh, you know, I can talk to you a lot about them, but the, it, it really is a great video. It's a proper nightcap for, for, for there you the, go. the yeah. end of this. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I appreciate your uh, your time and effort uh, trying to Cheers. us us while we're Cheers. drinking. Thank you. Everybody Cheers, that joined guys. us tonight, thank you very much. Um, I hope you learned something tonight. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're enjoying your bottles. I hope yeah. there's still some left in those bottles at this point yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely but everybody and, uh, go ahead and, uh, go ahead Gordon. and just very quickly anybody who's not been a never had glen going before uh and i know there's a couple of people out there anybody want to come on and just say what they think of the whiskeys before we wrap it up go right ahead anybody who's not a glen going fan not not a glen going drinker anybody get any i had uh i had already tried the 12 year um uh was it called timekeeper at some point it is all yeah, right timekeeper pack yeah but i'm new this week to the to the 10 year and i appreciate uh uh knowing the distinction between them and and being yeah. able to to know what's behind that yeah uh they're both very good and uh i, I agree that the 10 year could be uh, uh something you could really knock back <laughs> oh yeah no it is trust me i've i've yeah, I do on a regular He's basis. He's done that several times. Responsibly, uh, obviously. Don't worry about it.
Gordon, that doesn't sound like you at all. Yeah. Well, you were there, Michael. <laughs> Rich, Rich, just so you know, that cast strength is on that that cast strength is on the uh, is on the email. So you may want to take yeah. a look at that. So, yeah, you might want. If, to. I could, if I could say so, guys, uh, there's nothing better than to have some oysters with a nice single malt. So everyone should try and do that sometime soon. Absolutely. Oh, right. I'm with you. I... Everybody says vodka, but I, I'm totally with you, Rich. And I, the two of these, definitely the 12. Agreed. Yeah. Definitely the 12, because that zestier style will work really well with oysters. I used to work for a brilliant, brilliant whiskey, and I'm still a huge fan of this whiskey, Bo Moore. Um, and uh, Bo Moore, peated, lightly peated whiskey with oysters, beautiful, but actually Glen Goyne works perfectly really well with it as well. All right, everybody, uh, everybody stay safe, and uh, I hope to see you guys back here for another Whiskey Wednesday. And uh, uh, Gordon and Michael, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do some more fun stuff in the future. Definitely. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, yeah. thank you. Go thank cheers, you. Cheers, Ryan. Cheers, everybody. Yes. Pleasure. Go Knicks. Knicks are playing the Celtics tonight. I had to do Yeah, that. yeah. Well, we're going to let you go right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you were going to drive up here. terrible for the first time in 25 years. I had to and, and now you're going to drive up here. That'll go well. No, I'm sorry. I couldn't use no, there's no more. There's no more chapter one for you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, good night, guys. Have a good night. Have Thanks a, good a lot. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Thank Cheers. Good night. Bye.